If you have taken a class on environmental literature or conservation, chances are you recognize the name Aldo Leopold. Born in 1887 in Burlington, Iowa, Leopold was a naturalist and writer from his early childhood on through adulthood until his death in 1948. Shortly after his death, his collection of essays was published in his only book, A Sand County Almanac. We traveled to Burlington to meet Steve Brower, director of the Leopold Landscape Alliance, to learn more about his work, inspiration, and influence. Well, I, you know, I guess what I can do is just start with a narrative of Leopold as this really important uh, internationally known conservationist from Burlington. And uh, among the many firsts of the things that he did was he established the first prairie restoration project in the country at University of Madison, University of Wisconsin Madison. And so we, uh, and to honor Leopold, we have done the same thing here at one of our middle schools. We have, um, we have the, we purchased the two Leopold childhood homes, and so we invite uh, teachers and community organizations in here for meetings and to learn about Leopold. And some guests are resident uh, researchers and writers. And uh, the thing that we ask is that everybody give us an hour a day to learn more about Leopold. We explored every nook and cranny of the Starker Leopold House, from the cabinet of 150-year-old books, to the hidden maid's quarters, to the attic bedrooms and cabinet where the family kept a collection of bird nests found around the property. The 10-bedroom 1868 Victorian mansion housed three generations until Aldo Leopold's parents built a house of their own next door. Beautifully maintained, both houses are used by overnight guests to the Leopold Landscape Alliance. Aldo Leopold is known for his philosophy that just as ethics guide our actions in human communities, they must also guide our actions in ecological communities. He referred to this idea as the land ethic. While he was certainly not the first person to ever think of ecology in this way, he was the first person in Western academia to write about the idea of extending ethics to the living and non-living components of an ecosystem. Shaped by a lifetime of environmental work across geography and cultures, his position allowed him to bring these ideas to the attention of dominant culture in the U.S. and later to international attention. Many scholars of Leopold point to prominent moments in his career as moments that defined or refined his philosophy, but Steve Brower argues that the roots of the land ethic were actually planted by his grandfather, Charles Starker. Like Brower, Starker was a landscape architect. A German immigrant from the mid-1800s, Starker designed several prominent outdoor spaces in Burlington, from Crapo Park to the Aspen Grove Cemetery. Brower is familiar with much of the environmental literature Starker would have been exposed to in his schooling in Germany before immigrating to the U.S. Through his lifelong pursuit of understanding the intangible design elements of landscapes, he has grown to understand that Starker sparked the family's interest in outdoor outings, backyard nature studies, and environmental literature. His daughter, Clara, studied environmental literature and humanities in her youth, and her husband, Carl, Aldo's father, was a woodworker, hunter, and outdoor enthusiast. Aldo and his siblings studied at home for much of their childhood and adolescence, giving them plenty of opportunities to explore nearby woodland, survey wren nests in the yard, and read about faraway landscapes. After studying forestry at Yale, Aldo Leopold worked for the Forest Service in New Mexico, where he met his wife. He pushed for reform and less emphasis on industry and forestry through his work, notably with the Forest Service and later with the University of Wisconsin schools in forestry and agricultural economics. He became the first chair of the University of Wisconsin Department of Wildlife Management upon its formation in 1939. During this time in Wisconsin, he and his family worked to restore depleted farmland, living in a simple structure lovingly called the shack, which he wrote about extensively in a Sand County Almanac. Carl uh, 
Carl Leopold, who um, ended up doing some work in the Costa Rica rainforest, uh, was all the Leopold's son, and he was a plant physiologist uh, at Cornell University. And so, growing up in the Leopold family, um, all the Leopold children learned the values of the land ethic, and they also learned the process of restoration of land because they would go to the shack in Wisconsin every weekend to plant pines and establish prairie and so forth. So each of those children, when they grew up and became scientists themselves, they each developed their own version of the shack wherever they lived. And um, for what reason we don't know, Carl ended up developing his shack in Costa Rica. Estella has one in Colorado, uh, Starker has one in the Sierra, and uh, Luna has one in Wyoming and Nina became sort of the, the promoter and caretaker of the actual shop property and she expanded that to several times the original size. The idea of the land ethic and Leopold's lyrical prose make a Sand County Almanac a relevant read, even today. Like all literary work, it deserves to be honored in its complexity. Not every idea has stood the test of time, but Leopold biographer Kurt Miney shares a framework for how modern readers can engage thoughtfully with Leopold's big ideas. Leopold demonstrates the evolution of his thinking around big ideas like hunting over the course of his book, shifting to what he called non-consumptive recreation. He reminds us that it is important to remain open to completely changing your mind on a topic upon gaining more information or experience. Leopold wrote that we can only be ethical in relation to something we can see, understand, feel, love, or otherwise have faith in. His life work also illustrates how foundational childhood experiences in nature are to forming ecological identity and ecological citizenship, and how sharing these experiences and reflections with the people in our life creates ripple effects that can impact the world in profound ways.